Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to use kegging equipment for brewing. Let's get started. Okay, so I think first of all, we need to go ahead and get ourselves something. So let's get a little bit of a, it's a Belgian triple. So we're talking about kegging. Now, I've got lots of experience with this recently. So I wanna tell you about what to do. Today we're using mostly corny kegs or Cornelius kegs. Um, this whole method is, I mean, everything I'm gonna talk about today can be done with alternative kinds of kegs, the ball lock kegs, if you have the quarter barrel kegs, those things. There's like a few different connections you might need, but we're gonna talk about how to keg. So here's an empty keg. I am going to actually carbonate a mead in this video and show you how to do it. So this is an empty keg. Most of the time when you get empty kegs, they already have CO2 put in them, and that is namely to keep any bacteria from growing. So I need to release all the CO2 out of this. Okay, so in this one, by the way, it is, once all the CO2 is out, I fill up, filled it up. The kegs you might get might have had something in it if you bought it used, like this one was a used one, and it had Pepsi in it previously, so I mean, I cleaned, cleaned it well, but it's gonna smell a little like Pepsi for a long time. Um, so, what are, the, what are the parts of a keg? I'll go ahead and show you right now. So, the, the first part you're gonna have is the, I mean, you call it a lid, whatever you wanna call it. Essentially, it has an O-ring on it. The O-ring is to help seal the pressure. And now this one, because this is a corny keg, has a, the way it locks down is a little different. So you put it in, kind of sideways into the container and then turn it and it locks down. And whenever it pressurizes, it pushes that O-ring up. Uh, what you might need alongside this is some keg lube is what they call it. And you just put some around the edges to help it seal. Inside of your keg, you have, well on the outside I should say, you have your posts. So one of them is your in tab, which goes straight into the top. Now this in part can, this is where you put your gas in essentially to help build up the pressure. Um, and then there is the out portion, which has a giant tube going all the way to the bottom so that it, it grabs from the bottom whenever you're actually pouring off of things. And that's pretty much all the parts of this keg. Uh, again, some other kegs are different. You might have a few different ideas, but everything has posts and a lid and carbonates the same way. All right, now wait a minute. You might be saying, I don't have that kind of keg. I've got one that looks like this, which is also known as a Sankey keg. A Sankey keg has a different coupler. The coupler is the connection points that you have on a keg. So the coupler for the Sankey keg looks like this. You have a gas line, and of course, then you have a liquid line. And the liquid line comes out the top, which is a little different, and there might be variations on these couplers, so don't yell at me. Then you have a gas line. Now we're gonna talk about connecting these things here in a little bit, but the most important thing to know is your gas and liquid line um, are two different things. So you'll connect your CO2 to one and your liquid to another. I'm not gonna really discuss the Sankey keg in this video, so you might have to find something else, but maybe through this video, you'll understand how to connect them. Also, here's a fun picture of what the inside of a Sankey keg looks like. Now, some of you are still asking, well, I have a different lid. <laughs> I've got different kinds of lids. You have to make the choice between a ball lock keg lid or a pin lock keg lid. Now, the difference between them is mostly in that the pin lock has an actual pin you can pull to control the amount of pressure within it so it makes manually releasing the pressure nice. Then there's this ball lock style, which is a little bit of a different setup, but it doesn't have that pin so you can't exactly pull pressure out it does have an automatic pressure release as does the pin lock meaning that when you're going along if it builds up too much pressure it automatically will omit and get rid of that pressure so that the keg doesn't explode um, there's a great uh, article on this that is down in the description if you want to know the differences down to the exact letter but i will not bore you with more details all right, and the last little topic, I guess, would be the threaded versus barbed connections. Now, um, I'll show you a picture. This is basically a barbed connection on the left, and then on the right is a threaded. 
The difference is the threaded is more compatible for multiple setups, meaning that if you had a Sankey keg and you also had a Cornelius keg setup, you could kind of collaborate between the two a little easier. Um, also, your keg setting setup might need either one. Essentially, I'm going to link also down to this great article for you to uh, decide which one do you need. The article goes through everything. Um, I, this video could get really long if I go into all of the details. So I'm trying to kind of get through all the little things, but article below if you need to know which one to use. So this has already been sanitized. I am going to go ahead and fill this up with an apple cinnamon mead that I plan on carbonating. So the way I'm filling this up is literally I'm just going from the brew straight into the keg. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this process. All right, while we're filling up our keg, um, this is gonna be full in a moment. We're gonna talk about how to properly pressurize this. But let me tell you and show you some of the things you might have or need in your kegging system. I have two different kinds of things right now. I'm very fortunate in that I have a single tap kegerator right here. And then I have a four tap um, keyser that I have built. Now this was, these are both new air products. This was a converted freezer that is now a keyser or a keg freezer. This right here is the kegerator essentially. All right, so here is the kegerator. You can see it is the single tap. So this is where everything is connected to, to the tower as we call it. This is of course being moved over right now, as you can see. Now let's go and open up this kegerator. Inside my kegerator, it looks like a normal fridge. And essentially what I have is I have a corny keg in here that's already connected. Now you're gonna have a gas connection and you're gonna have a, a liquid connection. Uh, also my CO2 tank is very necessary. So um, for the single tap, this is very simple. Let me go and pull some things out. Okay, so let's first talk about this right here. This is, this, uh, is a regulator. Now, this regulator, that some of them you'll find will go up to higher PSIs. This one goes up to 60 PSI at max. It is connected to the CO2 tank by this connection. Now, I do have my gas running straight into the keg. So essentially, and I'll show this when my keg is ready over here, I, you control all of your pressurizing from here. There's a place to turn. Essentially, you can turn to, to increase the pressure or decrease the pressure. Uh, in a moment, I'll tell you what pressures I use, but this is that gas connection. You need this to be able to go to your keg. Otherwise, it doesn't work. This is how you get that gas out. This is a two and a half pound tank. You can get them larger, five pound, 10 pound, 20 pound. My gas is connected via a hose or tubing and clamps. Now, the way you do this is you attach your hosing or tubing and you have to have clamps. These clamps tighten down to make sure that there's no leaking of CO2. That tubing is connected over to my gas line. So this is a ball lock connection and essentially Again, I have myself tightened on here with a clamp. This goes straight onto one of the posts. Now this is currently going into the end because I am pressurizing from the top so the liquid goes down. This is already carbonated. My liquid comes out the out post and that is also has a ball lock connection here. This is, the way you remember this is gray, gas, black liquid. So clamped, got my liquid coming out of this tubing and this tubing is routing up into my post. What you might have is you might just have this tubing and like a picnic tap or something to where you can just pour right off the tap. If you have that, that's totally fine. Essentially, you just need to have your gas connected to your keg via what we talked about here, all of this. And then of course you need to have your liquid coming out. You might have a different kind of keg and that's okay, but you need to have these two connections in order for this to work. So this is for a single tap. You might have this if you're looking to go more taps. We're about to, about to talk about that. Um, once you are carbonated, which again, we've, we will talk about PSIs in a second, you can put it away, put it back in here. I'm gonna shove all the stuff back in. So once all that stuff's connected below, down here, we now have our tower. Now our tower, you have your tap handle. So this already came 
created. In a moment, I'll show you my four tap setup that required to do, me to do a little more work. But essentially, you can just, since this one's already carbonated, I can just pour straight from my tap. And there we go. I've got my carbonated brew. Now this is a simple one tap or coming right off the keg. Let's talk about if you have multiple kegs. So here is the, the keyser as I call it. Now this, is, this has four taps on it. You can see I've got four of them here. This required a little bit of building and there's a great video by doing the most I will show. He's already made a video on how to make this thing. So I'll tag that if you'd like to know exactly how to make it. But I am able to support four different kegs in here, which is what I have. I have my four taps. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and then kind of work our way out. Okay. So this is a little bit of a mess, but essentially here's what I have. I have down in this corner over here, this is my five pound CO2 tank. Now this CO2, CO2 tank has a regulator on it. And this regulator is that same gas connection that we had on the previous one, but it, instead of running to each individual keg, is running to a manifold. Now this is a four tap manifold, meaning that it supports four things or four outs. So this goes from our tank into the manifold and I have individual controls for each tap. So this right here is tap number one or keg number one. This is going to keg number two, number three, and number four. Each one of these outs is what goes into the in for each keg as we had talked about previously. So my gray gas line with my ball lock keg connection going to there, number two, number three, number four. I have, there's some tubing links you need. When it comes to gas, you just need enough tubing to get to the keg. So this is only about two feet of tubing per each one. The liquid line, a gas, or liquid length for your tubing is different. So that's my gas. This manifold is important. Um, you have to have this if you wanna do multiple kegs, essentially, because you need to be able to split your gas connection. So then, I have, for my connections, my liquid line is connected with my ball lock points. So like, for example, this is connected to, this is keg, or line number two. Line number two has a black connection for my liquid. In this black connection, there are just about 10 feet of tubing down here underneath this. So I don't have a great shot of this, but underneath I have my, my tubing kind of shoved in. The longer lines you have, you're essentially getting, ri getting rid of the amount of foam. So if you have short lines, what you'll find is a lot of times you'll be really foamy with your pores and the longer lines will help you get rid of the foam so you're not as foamy in the pore. It does mean that this is a little crazier to deal with. That, that line comes out of the keg and it goes straight into this tap. Now let me show you the, the back end of this. All right, so this is my connection for each one. As you can see here, there is a, I don't have the proper terminology for this right now, so I apologize, but this is, this goes straight to the actual tap itself. So I had to build a collar, and again, I will show you that doing the most video, or point you to it because he does a great job of explaining this. I had to build this wood collar and drill a hole, and then my tap has run through this into here. Everything is connected with your clamps. I've used a lot of clamps here, so make sure you have that. So I have one of these, this is my liquid line coming out for each one. So all four of these liquid lines are connected as you see here, and they're connected to the four taps you see right there. So now that each tap is connected, I am able to pour from any of them. Um, again, we'll talk about your pressures in a moment, but let's say that I want some of my I'll just get some regular sparkling water because that's what I want. Pour myself a glass of sparkling water and here we are. My keg has finished filling up. Now I say filling up, but this is not totally full, but when you're dealing with carbonation like this, you're putting a layer, layer of CO2 on the top. So it is okay that this is not totally full. We are going to take and take our lid, which we had talked about earlier. This is that corny keg lid, ball lock keg lid. And I am going to just essentially put it into here. You kind of have to put it sideways. It's a little funky to learn how to put on. Clamp it down. 
Now, I, I am fairly confident that this is going to seal just fine, but if it doesn't, in a moment, we will have to maybe use some of that keg lube to help it not lose CO2 out of here. So, now I'm gonna go ahead and get my connections. Let's get my gas. So if you're trying to fill up your keg, get your CO2 tank, what we have here, of course. I got my connections already set up. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and set up, set up my regulator to be, I'm gonna turn off to where it's not connected at all. Now I want this to, I wanna set the pressure to where it gets up to 30. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on for a second. Now, if you've connected this right, there should be no um, CO2 leaking. If there's CO2 leaking, then you know you've got something wrong. So this is on, no CO2 is currently leaking, which is good. Now I wanna get this, I wanna carbonate at 30 PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin this to get, to increase up until I get to 30 PSI. Cause that's what we're gonna carbonate at. Then, so this is still off right now, which is fine. I'm gonna go put this down. just like that. And then simply I'm going to turn on my gas and we should hear some results. All right. So we have pressurized our keg and what I'm listening for currently is for any CO2 leaking. I'm listening to find if there's any bubbles. And if you were wondering if you have a CO2 leak, what you can do is you can take a spray bottle, that is with sanitized liquid and you can spray, spray uh, excuse me, spray around the connections. And if there's bubbles, then there's CO2 leaking. So I don't hear any CO2 leaking in any way. Again, if you're concerned about that, one way you'll know if it's leaking is if over time, uh, if you turn off your gas, which I normally leave it on during the, the pressurizing or carbonation side, um, if you turn it off and over the course of a couple hours, it loses some PSI. So it goes from like 30 to say like 28, then you have a slow gas leak. If it's fast, then you have a fast gas leak. Now that this is connected, um, I am going to let this carbonate and we are gonna come back when this is fully carbonated. Here are a couple quick tips to carbonate quickly. Um, let's say that you want to rush your carbonation, which who doesn't? You can take and you can do a multitude of things. One thing people like to do is they, you can shake up your carboy. And again, you have CO2 protecting your stuff. So right now, shaking it up is a little bit easier, not nearly as bad for it. So you can shake it up this way. You can also take and if you're a big, strong person, shake it up that way. Some people will take and roll the keg around like this. If you do this a couple times a day and then make sure and repressurize, it will in, uh, increase the speed at which this carbonates. Normally this would take probably, I'll say three to four days without doing any of that stuff to carbonate. But if you want to quickly carbonate, you could do those tips. So now we let this thing sit. I am gonna put my gas back on and we're gonna let it carbonate and then we'll talk about pouring it. All right, it's been about three or four days. And uh, I, you know, I gave you the tips on how to quickly carbonate by shaking it up and whatnot. I didn't really do that with this. I just left that CO2 on top and it, you know, did its thing. So now we get to talk about your pressurizing. We pressurized at 30 PSI for about three or four days. Uh, again, you could use those tips. And then my serving pressure is normally at about Mm, I say five to eight PSI. Essentially, you just want it to flow pretty naturally, but you don't want it to over carbonate and, and come out too quickly. So I normally go about seven. That's probably my average. So I have my apple and cinnamon meat in here. Um, this is that single tap we had talked about. Of course, if you have that uh, picnic tap and whatever, you can just picnic tap right off of the uh, keg itself. But in this case, I have my kegging systems we had talked about. So right here, let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice pour of this brew.
All right, so as you can tell, this thing is beautifully carbonated. We just poured ourselves some, I mean, it looks great and it's, it's a great carbonation level for me. Just, just enough CO2 to really add some bite. Obviously, things can have different levels of CO2, so if you want more carbonation or less, kind of dependent on what you want to do. This thing's fantastic. So in this video, I've shown you how to carbonate in at least corny kegs. It's very, very, very similar in every other keg style, so that's something to note. Just quickly run down everything. You have all of your kegging equipment. You need your CO2 tank, a regulator, of course, tubing, clamps um, for that tubing if you are doing anything. Um, when you get to the single tap, it gets a little bit different. You know, you might have a tower and stuff. If you have a, a tap or tower that has two or three taps, that kind of changes some things. The multiple tap setup, four, tag, four tap, Keezer here is also something. So if you wanna know about those things, go back earlier in the video. Your carbonation pressure is generally about 30 PSI. And of course your serving pressure is lower. It's just enough to really keep it moving and flowing is, to, is at about seven. One thing I didn't mention earlier that I meant to is when you first pressurize your keg, um, you can do something to get rid of the excess oxygen that's in there. So what you do is you purge the keg of oxygen by actually taking in and turning on your CO2 and then you pull that O-ring at the top and that will release some of that CO2, but mostly any oxygen that's stuck in there. You just kind of let that go for a second or two and that should release any stopped or caught oxygen. You don't want oxygen in your brew because it's just not good for alcohol. Um, if you've ever poured wine and left it alone for a while and came back to it, it normally doesn't taste great. So that's something to do, something I didn't mention. Um, I would love to know what you think. Have you kegged before? Are you now going to go buy a kegging operation of sorts? It is a game changer. Forced carbonation is so helpful. I mean, I, I personally, I brewed without, or I brewed for like three years without forced carving anything. I was bottle carving things, which is fine and it works, but you have to go through extra hoops and you can't control as much. My apple and cinnamon mead, I was, I was able to take it to new heights because of forced carving. And I think you could take lots of different recipes to new heights by forced carving. Um, I will be listing down below a bunch of Amazon affiliate links to lots of things, to tubing, to clamps, to kegs, to uh, everything you want to buy or need to buy for kegging. Now I will go ahead and promote that if you have a local homebrew store, Support them first um, because they're most important. Um, Amazon links are nice, those go to support me, but support your local homebrew store and anyone you can that's surrounding you. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Go ahead, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, um, I make a lot of content, a lot of mead making content, but um, I also will teach you lots of other things about homebrewing. Thank you for spending your time here. Have a great day. Go keg some mead.